ready for my press picture, Patrick. Okay, smile. Make me famous. Turn your head. All right, time out. Something's just not working with this. This lighting's just not right. Where did you ever hear to use a flashlight for this? Well, we needed a light, and I had a flashlight in the closet. And those people in the Blair Witch Project, they used a flashlight, and they became famous. <laughs> yeah, well, they also use it in Frankenstein, but that just made people look scary. You're scary enough. Obviously not scary enough to scare you away. <laughs> look, you know, we have all this great lighting. Now all we need to do is learn the proper technique so we can really get the look that we're going for. That's right. We should watch this tutorial and get some tips about proper lighting techniques. All right, let's do that. Learning traditional three-point lighting will give you a solid foundation for portrait illumination. You can achieve everything from flat lighting scenario to deep shadow lighting. You will need three lights, stands, and if you have a boom for the hair slash background light, that would be preferred. Establish where your subject and camera are going to be. To capture flattering portraits, a guideline is that your camera should be positioned 6 to 12 inches above the subject's face. The lens you choose to use will determine the distance from your subject you will be shooting from. Once you know approximately where you're going to be positioned and your subject will be, you can start setting up your lights. Starting with your main or key light, place it on a 15 to 45 degree angle from your camera. If you are using a long lens, set your lights as if you are standing within 10 to 15 feet from your subject. Raise the light higher than the camera level so that the light is coming down on your subject on approximately a 45 degree angle. This light should be your strongest light. If you are in a dark room and you are using constant fluorescent light, you will be able to see the light spread and the intensity. Before turning on any additional lights, using a light meter, meter the light from the point of the subject. Your second light is your fill light. This light should be placed on the opposite side of the camera at nearly the height of your subject. The placement shouldn't be symmetrical with your key light. This light fills in the balance of your image. Meter your fill light. The fill light controls the creativity of your lighting pattern. You will want to turn off your key light and again use your light meter to establish how much light your fill is casting. The creativity comes in with the variations between key and fill ratios. If you want flat lighting or one to one ratio, match your fill light source to the same level as your key light. This light pattern is unflattering, but commonly used for ID photography, larger groups, families, and sometimes engagement portraits. Two to one ratio lighting. Your fill light will be one f-stop smaller than your key light. As an example, if your key light metered at f11, your fill light should meter at f8. This lighting scenario is typically used in basic press portraits, full-length fashion images, and general portraiture. 3 to 1 ratio lighting. Your fill light will be two stops dimmer than your key light, your key light at f11, and your fill light at f5.6. This lighting is beautiful for portraits and is commonly used for all portrait scenarios. 4 to 1 ratio lighting. The key light at f11 and the fill light at f4.0. This is getting into harsh shadow lighting and is extremely dramatic. This light pattern works particularly well on men. 5 to 1 ratio lighting. Your key light at f11 and your fill light at f2.8. This is extremely harsh. With a 5 stop difference you will almost have no detail on the fill side whatsoever. If you put egg crates or barn doors on your key light, in this scenario you can create what is called thin lighting. Maternity photographers often use this for the first family shoot after the baby is born. The third light rounding out your three-point lighting scenario is your hair light. The hair light casts light between your subject and the background to create separation. This light achieves separation by A. Creating a sharp outline on the back of the subject and accenting the hair from the top, spilling down onto the shoulders from the back to front. This light is easiest to use on a boom so that you can direct the light from directly above or from a slight angle. Typically, this light is a spotlight or snooted light, 
but if looking for a broader light source that will also illuminate your backdrop, a small softbox or light with a barn door can be used. If you want to create definition between the background and the subject, cast your light so that the back of the hair on the top of the crown is being lit. The rest of the light will fall on your background. To create rim lighting, which is a clean white line of light dividing your subject from the background, your hair light will have to be strong enough to create a clean halo of light around your subject from behind or one side. You will not have to meter this light. To achieve this, pull your boom away from the center to the same side of you as the key light. You will only need to be about 15 degrees off from center to accomplish backside rim lighting. The further away from center, the harsher and wider the rim light will become. It is important not to pull the hair backlight in front of your subject's ear or side center point. If this happens, a greater amount of light will be hitting the key side of your subject, thus offsetting your ratios. Now that you have your three-point lighting set up, it is time to start working with your subject and capture beautifully lit images. Tip of photo news. Digital note on ratio lighting. Most digital cameras work best with one to one, two to one, or three to one ratios. The larger the ratio, the more banding you will see in the transition from the light to the shadow. Banding looks like ripples in water on images. This is due to the camera sensor's short dynamic range. Some cameras do have a longer dynamic range built in, so you will want to experiment to see the limits of your sensor. If you plan on smoothing in Photoshop, it is advisable to shoot the higher ratios in RAW, R-A-W, which will allow you to adjust the shadow highlights afterwards. This is great. Now that we know all these proper lighting techniques, we can get all different looks and styles by simply moving the lights around and we don't have to change your outfit. You know how much time that's going to save? Oh yeah, we could definitely save a lot of time. We can use the butterfly lighting to get those really cool glamorous pictures I've been wanting. Oh, and for the press photo, we'll use broad lighting. Mm. And not to mention different light ratios. By simply moving them around and changing their intensity, we get a whole different look every time. Oh, and don't forget the scary flashlight look. <laughs> look, Amber, you're scary enough. Rah!